done it up. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate when uh, Zoom becomes a major part of our life, we have to use words like pivot and everything else. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to get things started. We still have people joining us, but uh, but I uh, I know Mohammed has limited time with us today, so I make sure we uh, we get uh, uh, through his uh, his comments and uh, and leave time for some questions. Um, good afternoon. I'm Scott, the President and CEO of Milton Chamber, and uh, happy to welcome everyone to another uh, Milton Young Professionals uh, uh, edition. I think everyone knows, but uh, we try and do these four times a year. Uh, really to uh, to try and give us a chance not only to network but also to uh, to learn about different subjects and to uh, hear from business leaders and we didn't want this uh, crazy pandemic to uh, keep us away from uh, from the learning series and and today we've got just an incredible business person who has such an extraordinary story who I'm going to introduce shortly but uh, for the Milton uh, Young Professionals Learning Series. We've been uh, very proud to have one of Milton's strongest community supporters as our partner, and that's uh, Gordon Food Service. And so now it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Melissa Calabria to uh, bring some opening greetings. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me here today. I'm so, so happy to be here. Um, so uh, very excited to uh, to hear Mohammed uh, chat in a bit, and I'm sure Scott will will introduce him a little bit more. Uh, from a Gordon Food Service perspective, it's uh, it's been a crazy time, as I'm sure you can all appreciate. Um, it's uh, I think even most specifically for the restaurant business and the food service business, it's it's been tough. We got some good news last week. Or earlier this week, the, the days are all blending together, so that's that's really good for us. Um, but you know that word, uh, Scott, you mentioned pivot. Uh, we've had to do a lot of that in the last uh, little bit. Um, it's it's quite interesting how how you can um, start doing things that you didn't know that you you could do, um, and it's really ignited our our fight or flight response. Um, and our ability to just move and pivot and, and do whatever needs to be done. Uh, Gordon Food Service has opened up a pop-up store in Milton. We're selling to the public. Um, we didn't ever think we were going to do that. We do that in the States. We don't do that here, but hey, we're doing it now. Um, and you know, it's really cool because you can, you're doing things that I think people, you know, you never really realized you could do it. So sometimes you're, uh, you're told no, or things take too long, or we can't get that done. And then all of a sudden, you know, put us in a pandemic and it's done really quickly. So there's almost a silver lining as weird as that sounds. Um, and it's, it's allowed us to flex muscles that we didn't know we had. And I think those muscles will forever be there with us now going forward, which is very interesting. And, um, I think there's just a lot of camaraderie and, and collaboration throughout everything uh, throughout this. So we are uh, strong partners of the Milton Chamber of Commerce. We are very happy to be here. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll throw it back to you, Scott, but uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing Mohammed speak. That's great. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, for everyone that's joined us, uh, we've got a bit of a different format uh, today. Rather than doing this as a webinar and just having our, our speakers on the, on the screen, We've got everyone on the screen and we're doing it as a meeting. So for the Q&A part, after Mohammed uh, speaks, you know, just raise your hand. Like don't, you don't have to raise the, uh, you know, the Zoom hand. You can actually raise your own hand and, uh, and I'll try and get to you for, uh, for the Q&A period. But, uh, you know, when we were looking for, uh, for possible speakers for the learning series, we turned to our, our good friend Ali at, uh, at Milton's uh, Paramount Fine Foods and he, he suggested his president and CEO. So we're so proud to have uh, Mohammed Feki with us today. Um, his bio is uh, is extraordinary. It would take the entire meeting just to uh, to tell ever, everything about him. So I'm going to give you a very short version uh, because we want to hear from the man himself. Um, you know, he uh, he purchased what was a nearly bankrupt restaurant uh, and transformed it into what is uh, known today as the, the fastest growing Middle Eastern uh, halal restaurant chain in North America, and that's Paramount Fine Foods. 
you know, he, he not only employs thousands of people, uh, we're so proud that he took a, a leadership role in helping Canada to uh, to bring some Syrian refugees to uh, to Canada as well. And and uh, he not only helped bring them to Canada, he also trained and employs them. So, so an incredible man. And again, I could spend hours telling you all about his accomplishments, all of his awards, but but again, better to hear from the man himself. So I want to turn it over now to Mohammed Faiki. Thank you for joining us. No, thank you very much for having me. And I'm very honored and proud to be invite, invited to join you as we try to move forward and take our first steps toward recovery. So it's, a, it's, it's really like difficult to see what was happening. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the difficulties of the past few months. We all know the challenges. We all feel the pain of those who have lost their jobs or even their businesses. And those who have known the impact of this virus on families and friends and even lost some family members. Through this crisis, we have done our best at Paramount to treat our employees right and to support them, to keep as many on the job as possible. And let me talk a little bit about employees. A lot of you are business owners or planning to open businesses or you're already growing your own business. At Paramount, we do believe people come first. We believe in the four Ps and that the first P is people. Without people, without looking after your people, I think you will not be able to make a profit. We are, I am personally wired that way. People had believed in me when I came to Canada with $1,200 in my pocket, when I lived in the basement apartment, even shared basement apartment. And that's why our first part of the culture and most important part of the culture of Paramount that we all operate as people comes first. Even now, I'm gonna take it to another level. People come to me and wants to start conversation. Even people I don't know, they wanna talk and give me their opinion about business and give me some business suggestions. And I'm always happy to listen. And they say, Mohammed, customers always comes first. Mohammed customer always, always come first. And then they repeat to say, customers always right. And you have to treat your customer like they're the most important to you. I actually disagree. As a CEO, my people come first. That's what I believe. Because when I look after my people, my people will, laugh, will, 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 will be look, will looking after the customer. Not for me, the customer comes first and I don't treat well my people. And it's not my job to look after the customer. It's my job is to give the tool, the tools and the care and the love and the training for my team and build them up and get the best out of them for them to look after the customer and make the customer feel first. And that's what I truly believe. And during the pandemic was a lesson, was a test. I'll never forget March 27 to March 30. I went to a dark place. I thought my culture was a lip service because I was challenged by having my executive team coming to me and say, we're ready to discount some of our salaries so we can lay off less people. And for me, they were both problematic. I'm not used to take money from anyone, especially the people that helped me, served me, served my company, built it together with me. They're much smarter than I am. They have affected my company more than I did. They have brought me to where I am today. And here I am asking them to discount their salary. Like when you call your team a family, would you take away half of the plate of food off the table of your brother, sister, or mom just because you have less money or you try to make it happen? Well, I decided to try to make it happen. I went to that darker place for three days and it was very hard. It was a test. And then I decided that if I do not win that test and stick to our culture, I'll lose their respect. They'll lose their love and belief and their buy into the company. And we all lose. So it wasn't the time for me to go to darker places. It was the time for me to find the solutions and be positive. And that's what I had to do. So we didn't lay them off. 
what we did is we paid them for a full month, full salaries, and we carried it as a company. Then we asked them who wants to take it as a vacation so they can still get the cash, yet they were afraid to come to work and they didn't want to give it to anyone. And we all worked it out as a team. And it felt so great. In April 2, I woke up that day like I was born again because I didn't lose myself. And here my message for you all. You need to pivot. I agree with Melissa and thank you very much for being here and for sponsoring this and for supporting the melting community. Gordon Food has been around for many, many, many years and we all have learned a lot from all of you. But the most important part, when you pivot, when you change, don't lose yourself. Don't lose your culture. Because today, in the world of business, there is a lot of money. There is enough investors that are looking for investment. What there is not enough is the biggest assets that we all need to be successful. And those are talents. And today's talents will only stick to your company. We'll only be proud to be part of your company if your company look after people. And the second P come in. The only reason why people will stick in, will, 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 will buy in and will hang on with you to your company, will support your company to come out on the other side is purpose. When they see that they have more than the reason of collecting a check, they're proud of the company for much bigger reason than just making money. They would want to be part of the company. They will want to be proud to be part of the company. We are looking forward to be part of something bigger than ourselves. And usually community like Milton are bigger than us. And we want to be part of the community. And when you see your company is making a big difference in the community, then you have a bigger reason. Then your family are proud of the work that your company is doing to the community. And again, your team will perform better and we all win. So that's, that's the two Ps. Definitely the third P is the planet. Again, when you pivot, if you're a restaurant, don't go and pivot to styrofoam. This is not a profit. I know it's expensive to have biodegradable and compostable cutlery for a restaurant. But that's a short-term thinking. Entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs because they think long-term. And everything they do short-term is a step, smaller step to get to the long-term solution. And the long-term solution and the cheaper way is to have a company that looks after the planet. The executives today will not work for a company that does not acknowledge that the way and the processes of the company should be aware, should address the planet, and should be doing things to save our planet. At least the best thing available that we know of. And that's part of that. I think what we went through, well, we continue going through today, it should be a playbook for all of us, what we possibly could be facing down the road with all the planet and the crisis that we possibly could be facing with. And we should come out of this understanding that we become what we celebrate. We will all become what we celebrate. So if we celebrate people, we'll look after people. We'll worry more after people. If we celebrate purpose, we'll look after community and we'll become kinder. So we need to celebrate kindness more. And if we all celebrate companies that look after the planet and they join companies and chose the other leaders, the old type of CEO that don't think people, purpose, and planet is the only way you can make a profit today. And worries more about shareholders than about people, purpose, community, and the planet. We can show them that talents will not come to you. Customers will not support you. So it's not only the right thing to do, it's actually the profitable thing to do. And a lot of people do it for different reasons, but it's okay, as long as they're doing the right thing. That's all what we want to push them. So during these challenges, we need to come out of this. And the only way we're going to come out, when we actually do not lose ourselves, and we're ready to pivot without really pivoting. Like I give you the example, a restaurant will say, okay, now I'm okay to sell in plastic, styrofoam, 
because now there is an excuse why I would do it. No, that's not how you pivot by losing the pride of how you did business. You pivot maintaining the right way, sticking to the same principle, but doing business differently, not changing your principle to do business the same way. And that's the wrong way. So through this crisis at Paramount, we have done our best to treat our employees right, to support them and to keep as many of them on the job. We have also made a point of helping our community, provi providing food like you saw Ali and Milton, even for health workers and others. And we've played a part raising money for the food bank in Mississauga, over a million four in five, six weeks. So they can continue to do their important work. When people have lost their job, they want more to use the food bank. And the food bank needed all of us to support the food bank so the food bank can support the people that needs it the most. But it's more useful that we all look ahead, not look in the past. But I have to mention something. My biggest celebration was seeing young leaders like yourself, like all of you, people that I have mentored over the years, starting initiatives to help the community. And texting me and saying, see, we learned that by looking at you over the years doing this. You know what the biggest gratitude of a mentor is seeing your mentees succeeding, striving, and doing things great, aligning with your values, aligning with your culture. That's better than mentors don't get paid for what they do. That's our gratitude, is seeing you succeed, seeing you doing things the right way, the right way in my four P's way, and our four P's way, because hopefully the four P will become our way for succeeding in business by looking after people, purpose, planet to get a profit. Not just let's go to the bottom line and the bottom line is money. The bottom line is not money and if you wanna make money, you need to look after those four. So the first thing I tell people when they ask me about this crisis and the pandemic and how do we come out of this? I'll say, we need to tell people and to get the idea Get your head out of the idea of normal again. It's not going to be easy to go back to what's normal. It's going to be very long time before any restaurant or almost any business is truly back to normal. Our goal must be the first order of business in staying in business. Our goal must be to make the best out of a difficult situation. Some experts are predicting that the sales will not even return before a year. Like 100% of the sales will not even return before a year. I predict 18 months. I'm working on 18 month plan, work back schedule, split in three, six months, and the last six months, the last months of the last six months is when I will be factoring 95% of my sales as of February 2019, not before. Expect the worst. Prepare yourself for the worst so there is no change of a plan every time. And that's my suggestion to everyone. So if the sales don't come back in a year and a half, but rent is still due on the first of every month, a number of businesses will face a potential legal battles with suppliers, landlords will face closure. Others have their debt to grow to a point that survival is no longer assured. All of us will have to find a way to adapt to allowing fewer people into our stores or restaurant at any one time, all while having to pay for things like plexiglass and masks and gloves and sanitizer and extra staff actually. Like we opened our restaurant in British Columbia already. We need two employees, one to set the lineup to make sure there's 50% only in the restaurant, one to sanitize all the time. And probably more social media people to tell the people how much we sanitize. So at less sales. So it's less sales, more cost. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense in the bottom line of business. And the landlord, doesn't matter what you do. They want the rent on time and every time. So we have to really make sure that we find a way to adapt, to bring more money at the top line. Suppliers will want all their money that we, are, we owe them. And the dangerous, I sent a letter to my team in one evening, and that was the letter that wrote to recovery. And I said the most dangerous part will be when the government announced opening, Psychologically and media will think that we're done. We're open, we're back to normal. Suppliers, landlords, everybody expect their money immediately when businesses has not increased more than five to 10% sales. And our cost has increased because the opening will have cost. 
So, and we have other costs. A lot of our staff don't want to come to work. They're taking the $2,000 a month. They're scared, right? And some of them actually, they found a job. So we have to train more staff. We try to make the best out of tough situation. It's important that we look at things through the eyes of our customers. People habit have changed over the past few months. Some are vulnerable and have low risk tolerance and won't come back soon. Some have become a great cooks at home and they're more likely to stay home and eat because that's the safer thing for them and maybe is the most like best buck for their money, the, the best way to, to, to save money for themselves and for their family. And others don't have money at all to eat out because they have lost their job. And right one, right now some can't even imagine that they can allow someone else to touch their food. So many of these habits will change again, but everyone forget the, the time factor. The time factor is important. And for businesses, and all of you owns businesses, lasting three, four months at 50% of the sale is a miracle. I'm actually worried about the mortality rate in business. And I'm doing all what I can, calling all my friends, politicians, uh, chambers of commerce, making some noise so we can save the small businesses because the small, small businesses are where we, 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 we go have our dates and where, where we have our memories and they employ our children and they support our local businesses and farmers. So we need to support them now. So many of these habits hopefully will change again and fast, but that will take time. And I mentioned this for a very specific reason. So do not assume people will rush back to your business simply because we just opened the door. Like I said, that's the most dangerous point. Some will, but many won't. And it's not a reflection on the business owners. The second important thing I tell the business owner is to be clear in your communication. There is nothing called over communicating. Communicate better with your team. Your team is more stressed now. We are all more stressed. Sometimes I overreact about a small thing. And I ask myself, why did I overreact it? I was happy in the morning. It's the emotions and many changes and multiple changes happening fast, piling up and us forcing a smile as much as we can. So and as soon as we find a reason why to get angry about something, we overreact to it. So you need as a leader, as a business, as a human, as a citizen to be kinder in a parking lot, kinder to your employees, kinder to your supplier, kinder to everyone, and everyone needs to be kinder to each other because we're all, all going through this and we need to understand the other person's perspective. Make sure your customer know exactly what to expect when they show up. On a patio seating, that will be limited. So tell people that in advance. Tell them if you won't have all the product or services you usually offer in your business, regardless if you're a restaurant or not. You don't want to disappoint them. And these people, they've been waiting for three months for your return to reopen and for them to be able to enjoy your, your patio, a haircut at your place, whatever you do for business. Use your website and social media. Use it every day if you have to. I think I do a lot of good work on that. I can share with you some of the things that we're focused on on payment. We're going with a smaller menu. We actually decided to create something called Dare to Care menu. We actually, people thought I was crazy. I went and I dropped my prices during a pandemic. When my sales got hit 80% less, I actually dropped my prices because I wanted to be a partner with the community. And I actually thought it would actually be the smart thing to do to send a message to Canadians. We're your partner in good time and bad time. And we know that you need the dollar to stretch. And we're going to make it stretch. We're going to make your dollar buy you more at payment. And we made it smaller to reduce the cost, to simplify operation, and to make sure we are focusing on items that are affordable for our customers. We're investing in cleaning supply, personal protective equipment, so that our employees feel safe and our customers are comfortable. We're putting a greater emphasis on creating frozen meals uh, at the butcher shop so people can take them, finish them at home for, for themselves if they ask for them to be frozen. But as you know, Paramount does it fresh. And even sub so we went into supplying boxes for barbecue. We went into supplying things that people can finish them at home and feel like Chef Ramsey. <laughs> 
even if we're giving them the spices and everything, because they're feeling safe that they're doing that cooking. We can't just put the key in the lock, open the door and say business will come back the same way. No, we have to be innovative. The square footage of the restaurants don't make sense. I have a huge restaurant. People are never going to be able to sit there and I'm going to have to operate with 50% of that. So what, what am I doing? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I have two other brands and I'm going to use the back of each PMO to be the dark kitchen, the ghost kitchen and do a delivery online for those two brands in the back of Paramount so we can bring more income from the top. You just don't sit and do nothing. That's not what entrepreneurs do. Entrepreneurs can change the world. They have already many times. And it's our chance. It's our opportunity to show that the entrepreneur that they were around in the time of Corona, they were happy to smile and to stand up and set an example for the next generation entrepreneur. That's what we need to do. Sometimes I think I'm crazy. I'm too positive for what's going on. But what's negativity going to bring me? So each of us needs to be aware of two important things about the public mindset. First, sense of sympathy and empathy that we saw as the start of the pandemic will likely be diminished. Many business owners received strong messages of support from customers when they were forced to close. People felt for us. But more businesses open, again, people are likely to believe that we're okay. A lot of time in my conversation, I say, look, 60% of my stores until today are closed because they're in the airport, in universities, underground, in train station. And people will say, but how many open? And I'll say 12 or 14. And they say, well, that's great. And I'm looking at them and said, okay, the math doesn't add up. I have 30 closed. How is that great? That's very important for you to understand. So don't you need to manage your expectation. You need to understand, like when you started your business day one, you were alone and less people fed for you because you, you didn't have a business and you had that strong grit. You can't really try to be comfortable in this stage. You need to show back and use back that grit that you had before and set another example of positivity and grit and entrepreneurship and do it differently. But you need to manage your expectations. They won't necessarily, the people want to understand the challenges of this transition period. Like I said, it's the most difficult people when everybody thinks we opened up, the sales are back and it'll be okay. Second, I think we all need to be aware that customers may return with very high expectations and rightfully so. In their mind, they're taking a risk on us coming into our stores, in our businesses. They want us to make it worthwhile and they want it perfect. None of this meant as a criticism to customer. I mention it because it's important for business owners to understand that the public mood may have evolved as well. The hard truth about the restaurant industry, for example, the hard truth about a lot of small businesses is that there is not a lot of leeway. Most people don't run a small business to get rich. They run it because they have passion and they're hoping to multiply it one day or sell it one day. That's the true for members of this council and for all governments as well. It's true for healthcare professionals who continue to work to keep us safe and healthy. It's true for business owners and entrepreneurs. We can't give up. I mean, we worry so much about our businesses. It's like a baby. And it's not an option to give up until the last day of a business, even before shutting the door. Businesses, business owners and entrepreneurs are thinking of ways to come out. And it's true as well for families who have been affected with the pandemic. Those of you who know me, you know that I'm an optimist. I came to Canada with nothing in my pocket. I worked hard to afford this business. And I worked even harder to build the business to where it is today. But now everything has changed. There is no guarantee. My business, there is no guarantee that this business will survive. We were just on a call right before this. And there were 50 leaders. They own all of them, hundreds of restaurants around Canada. And they all said, if the government don't stop the help immediately, we will all go under. That's what they were saying. And by me hearing people that they've been in this business from before I even came to Canada, that's scary. I start thinking, is there something I'm not seeing here? Is there something I'm not understanding? I'm not being over optimist, but that's what you know me and, and I understand. In Lebanon, when I went through the civil war, it was hard. 
I tell you, a minute felt like an hour down in, the, in those bunkers when we spent it with my family, hiding from the world. But what a great feeling it was when we finally emerged. What a great feeling it was to get through a time of a challenge together as a family, the neighbors, the people in the building, the neighboring building, to see a new day and to get a fresh start. When the war ended, the first thing, and the first thought were on my father's mind was, let's build again. Let's start a new business. Let's hire more people. Let's build our country again. Well, we are, we are all going through a tough time right now. I understand. Business owners, employees, everyone, Chamber of Commerce are like working for us, helping us, helping the community to, to voice, to, to, to take our voices to the politician and make a real difference with that. I know it's very hard to see the light now, but let me tell you from someone that came from a real war and lived in bunkers. The light will come. A new day will come and we can greet it together and start building once again. And you can't build a future while you're looking backward. So to everyone who owns or runs a business in Milton, I say this, hard work got you where you are today. Hard work will help you get you through this. So stay positive, take care of your employees, listen to your customers, take the creativity and determination that made you what you are today and use it to survive and thrive and make sure Whatever you do, don't forget to do things maintaining who you are, maintaining the culture of people, maintaining the culture of community. I encourage you all to support your local businesses in any manner you see fit, online, in person, eating in, taking out. These people and these businesses are the foundation of that city. The pandemic has taught us the importance of community, of supporting those around you. So keep your money in your community. Support the people who serve you. Stand with your neighbor. We heard it a lot. We are all in this together. And together, we can prevail. And I'm going to tell you one more thing. If I came to this country only with $1,000 or $1,200 in my pocket, and I was able to build a company, build a business, because of the generosity of, and support of Canadians, Let's show that again. It's our turn to show it to you, the younger people, to the businesses that they're surviving and struggling today, to the people that they actually thinking to let go of their dreams, that we, the community, are behind you. We will support you so we can come out of this together. If we do not come out of this together, we'll never feel the same happiness. This is a place of hope. Canada will always be Canada, an example of a place of hope for the rest of the world. And I think, and I truly believe, we will build this country again. We will see this light that we're all waiting for. And we will hire more people to make sure we maintain and we continue setting an example of diversity, inclusion, hope, love, and definitely positivity in a world that badly needs it. And this is our opportunity. So thank you so, many, so much. I'll open it to questions and I will hope I'll be able to answer them all. Uh, Mohammed, uh, very inspirational and uh, thank you for that. And before I uh, go to the questions, uh, tell us about where you are. I am in box, actually. I'm going to show you all. I'm in the new concept, the restaurant. That's one of the evolving steps that we did at Camelot. If I know how to turn this around, I'm not very, yes, I do actually. I found it. So I am in Boxed. And let me take the charger because that's an opportunity for you to see it. I do not want to do a presentation for you. but So this is a concept that we started. And we're just opening tomorrow. But you've seen a lot of it in the media. The last couple of days. Today is closed because tomorrow is the grand opening. So you arrive, you scan the code, you get the menu, or if you do not want that, you can order on a kiosk, and then your name will show up on that screen. It'll tell you what cubby. You go to the cubby and you tap, and it'll open up with your food ready in it. That said, we made sure that this concept hires more people than less people. 
because as you see, there is a small window that shows our kitchen, real people working there. And to make sure we support all these numbers of cubbies, we need actually more chefs than the same size restaurant that it's not operating this way, but this particular business is basically safer for a pandemic without losing the 4P. And I'll explain to you how is that. The first P is people. We hire more people in the back. So in the same four or five hour in the financial district, we can put out more sales because we have a 20 copy, 18 copies. So instead of having at McDonald's two people at the cashier, we have 18 here. If we put more chef, we can put out more food. The sales will go up. The profit will go up. So that's people. Uh, purpose, we have this light that actually, this light, we set it up. It's a big light in the window, huge. It's around six feet by six feet. And this light actually, we light it every day according to the causes of the community that we're celebrating. We'll match the CN Tower. So two days ago was matching the Raptors, uh, basically celebration of uh, the uh, anniversary of the, our Raptor Championship. Uh, planet, everything is biodegradable here, including the cutlery and the wrapper of the cutlery. So yes, everybody said it's very expensive. It's actually the cheaper thing to do. And I always say, People, purpose, and planet brings a profit. That's great. Thank you. Congratulations on the opening tomorrow. It's uh, Young and King, right? So we'll, it's we'll be right down there as soon as we can. King. Please <laughs> do. The mayor, mayor Tori is doing his press release from here tomorrow. He's bringing the doctor, the, the health uh, uh, doctors from the city to do their daily update from Box. Again, sending <laughs> a message of love and hope to the city and to the people that I love the most, the Canadian that I love the most. This country has given me an opportunity and I wanted, look, I could have opened two months from today and lose less money, but I wanted to lose more money, but send a lot of, a big message of love and positivity and hope to everyone out there to say, like I said, the light will come again. So we do have one question for you. When you're talking to, uh, to other CEOs who, uh, who believe in profit before people, uh, what personal successes are you sharing from your business to prove to them that, that your way is the better way? Well, it's very simple. You go to our social media. Uh, when we did the uh, uh, fundraising $3.6 million for the 752 flight, the Iranian flight that was down. And social media, uh, a trend started by people taking pictures of Paramount Food, right? Saying, I want to support this company that's supporting our Canadian that died on the flight that down. And the same thing with Mississauga Food Bank, people were taking picture and say, people that do this, we're gonna support them. So the bottom line again, it is the profitable thing to do. And it's 100% the profitable thing to do from another point of view. I'll tell you a story. And to the person that asked the question is amazing. Uh, when we did the homeless case, what happened is in the middle of December, uh, in, not in the middle last, December 31st, I got a call at 4 p.m. And my wife was looking at me and said, who are you talking at 4 p.m. December 31st? And then it got escalated to 7 p.m. And she said, honey, it's New Year. What are you doing? I said, there is a problem. And she said, yeah, I'm sure there is a problem. You're with someone on the phone all the time. What's going on? I said, look, they telling me that there is around 20 homeless people and they're getting a frostbite in the streets of Toronto and the shelter are full. And a couple of them might die and we need to do something about it. So I called my team and all of them, you know, getting dressed to go out for New Year Eve and this, that, this young lady that uh, ran my office. I mean, she probably missing only putting the dress on and leave with her husband. And yeah, and I'm calling her and I'm saying, you know, I have uh, a problem. We have to find the 20 hotel rooms in the middle of it. And she's like, what? I said, yes. And she said, okay, let's find the 20 hotel rooms. And you know what happened that day? The vice president, uh, the vice president of training in Tom Horton texted me and said, my mom asked me to ask you if you would hire me. And I said, what? Yeah, he said, my mom said, you want to do yourself a favor? Go work under in a company of someone like this, this man here. He left his wife and his children in New Year Eve. His team did it just to save it. 20 homeless they never met. They put them in a very high-end hotel to resolve a problem that is not his. He wasn't the mayor of the city. He's not a politician, but they did it because that's what they believe the right thing to do, right? 
And you want to talk about people who are not convinced the bottom line is not only profit and that's the profitable thing to do to look after people in the community and the planet. Well, I have to, for you, million a real example. And I have, you're right, I had to show some of those CEO, send them messages of over 40 people that bought food during this pandemic. When we went on the streets of Toronto and we gave us kids of water to every homeless shelter, people were going to buy Paramount and post it. I could have, you know, people don't know that, but it's a smaller group and I can share it. Do you know that the first two months of the pandemic, I saw my children from behind the glass? Because I had to be down with my team and I have to be down with the people that they're bigger than me. The poor and the needy and the homeless and the healthcare worker are bigger than all of us. And I can't be good a friend to them when everything is perfect. I have to be good a friend of them in the good time and bad time. That's what I learned in Canada. That's what I learned for being a Muslim, a good Muslim, a good Canadian, a good citizen, a good human. Let's stop calling ourselves in different places in different ways. We're all one, right? And that, I have million of proofs, millions. So Mohammed, you're talking about communicating with your staff. Um, how are you doing that? How do you receive feedback from your staff? And do you have any, any tips, any do's and don'ts on communicating with your teams? Well, definitely. I mean, our company is a bit funny company the way it's set up. I'm, I'm the CEO, I'm the only investor, but I'm just a vault. So the top 10 people in my company, anyone will outvote me in five seconds, right? So if we have something we're going to decide on, the first person will say, what a, what a bad idea, Mohammed, I'm done, I'm out of the boat. <laughs> like everybody else can actually make the decision and we all face the problem together. Look, I honestly believe with the IKEA syndrome. You know the IKEA syndrome, the study in Harvard. Why do you go to IKEA, buy a table, and they ask you to put the four screws yourself? Very simple. If you want your team to be part of your Family, you have to make them part of the decision making. You don't make your decision alone. You don't set the strategy alone and tell them to follow it. They'll never buy in. And the best way to maintain the communication with your team is to get their buy-in. And don't make the ideas your idea. And don't act like it's their idea. <laughs> make it really their idea. And communicate with them and make them be part of the decision making. And that's what we do at Paramount. So if we put out an idea, let's open box in June 15 or 18. And I say, yeah, let's do it. Carolyn might say, no, we're not doing it. That's crazy. Why don't we open three months down the road and lose money? Then we'll all take a vote on it. And that's the IKEA syndrome. You take a table at home, you put the four screws together. All of a sudden you're yelling at your son or daughter for running through it because that's your art piece. You were part of the creation. I suggest you all, to have your team part of the strategy, to have your team part of the, like I don't go to the strategy meeting until two days after because I want them to create a strategy they believe in and they can defend against me even. I do not want them to be shy to say their opinion and all of a sudden everything I say, they all say, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. That's not the way it should be. I want them to create the strategy, buy into it and that will execute together because now it's their strategy to defend. And that's how I communicate. Look, I make mistakes every day. I learn from them. They learn it from me. But the bottom line, don't lead it from the top. Lead it from the aligned with them. Lead at the same level of them. And even better, I lead it from under because I'm a gemologist. What do I know about the food industry? Like, why would they listen to me? I should be listening to them. That's the truth. And never forget where you came from. Never, ever forget where you came from. Always be proud where you came from. A lot of people... These days, they change their name, change the way they do business, do everything. But the bottom line is, you have to be proud of you. You have to know what you don't know. You need to know what you don't know and let your team do their work, what they're best at. I'm a gemologist, guys. I don't know how to fry an egg, <laughs> right? Why would I tell you I'm not to do in a, in a business, right? So, and that's the bottom line. That's what's important. Mohammed, you've been very generous, generous with your time, and, uh, and I don't want to keep you any longer because uh, you've got a restaurant to open tomorrow. I know you're doing a television show later on, so uh, you're a busy, busy man. And, and again, you've uh, you've been very inspirational. Happy to take another. Happy to take another question if you like. It's fine, up to you. Okay. Oh, Ben, Ben has a question. So, thank you for your time. Thank you for the inspiration. I mean, it's something about the. The light in your eyes, I think that, that 
certainly uh, was something that I needed to see and hear today. Uh, my question is, um, my business is Enable Education, and we help companies do training. Um, as a B2B provider, when many of our typical clients, Paramount, Gordon Food Service are great examples of those, um, when you are facing your own struggles, do you have any advice to me as a service provider of a way to make what we do appealing or for me to be flexible in payment terms? Like how do I support when I know that our prospective clients need us, but they don't have cash today? Well, I mean, number one, you need to understand whatever you offer someone else, you're able to sustain it as long as you're needed. And you need always to be, I always suggest to work with people. Always, always. Pandemic, no pandemic. I always suggest to work with people. Losing cut, definitely finding out who the people are, building a history with them, doing that I think before you work out with them and make it easier on them. But it's always the best way is to work out with people by making sure that you do not run out of cash by lending cash. You do not run out of, or, or, or your life and survival depend on them from two sides, the sales and actually you and your existence as a business. We understand that always we depend on our customers for the sales. But I always say to everyone out there, bank for disaster. Bank for disaster. I used to bank for disaster for two years, personal one year for business. So if my business shut down for a full year, I could survive. My, if my personal life for any reason stopped any salary to come in, I could survive for two years paying my bills without my children feeling it for two years. As soon as this hit, I decided to actually push one year on each. So now, now I need to bank for disaster, two years for my business and three years for my personal. But for you, work with, listen to your uh, customer. Uh, ask them that question, how can I help you, right? How can I help you? Don't tell them how you can help them. We always have a misunderstanding of telling people, look, I can do this for you. Well, you might have just did something that they didn't need, didn't ask for, you might have offered them more than they wanted, but you, but you still didn't hit what helped them the most. Communicate with people, talk to them, and don't be afraid that you will be taken advantage of because if you run out of customer, you run out of everything. And if you run out of money, you can't run your business. So it's a difficult balance that you need to pick and choose who you want to invest in and communicate openly with them, right? Document what you communicate with them, do the right thing. And then one should be offended, but Keep your smile, mm. keep your cool. They will not work with you. If you, they feel you're at risk, you are at, you know, you're, you're not sure what you're doing. And you need to send them that, everyone, all of us today, we need to send that message of security, safety, that we are stable, stability message, right? Otherwise the customers do not want to do that. And, <laughs> Quite honestly, some customer will say, if a company is going under, why would I pay them their money? There is no need for us to pay them their money. Mm. Right? So you need to send that message. You need to communicate much more with all of them, and then you'll be fine. Thank you. No problem. Definitely, I need to more, know more information, detailed about your business to see what we can do. Mm. Mohammed, again, we very much appreciate the, the time that you've taken with us today. And... Uh, you know, I don't know if you can see the chat room, but uh, you know we've uh, we've got more uh, more more people talking about uh, your message uh, and and the the positivity and and just the the inspirational uh, uh, message that you've had for us today. So um, again, on behalf of our Milton Young professionals, thank you so so much for uh, for taking time out of your busy schedule. We appreciate it. Um, we wish you. Best luck uh, with Paramount Fine Foods and with Box and uh, in all the other ventures. I know that uh, in your or in your uh, your dreams. Thank you very much. I really appreciate having me with you, and it's a pleasure for me. And to all of you out there, let's really celebrate and kindness because we become what we celebrate, and we need to celebrate kindness. We need to be kind to each other, and it's not the time for you to just put your head down and go to that dark place I went for three days. Remember, you're the person that actually built your company, made it to where it is today, and you can be part of rebuilding this country again to come out of this pandemic. And together we can make Canada and make sure that Canada remains the country that we picked 
out of the rest of the world to come here and build a business and build a family. Thank you so much, everyone. Please be safe. And if there is anything I can do, text me on LinkedIn and I'm happy to provide anything if I know and if I don't know, I'll try to find out. Thank you again. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you very much. Thanks for answering my questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank Have a good you. afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.